Hello my friends, in last week's episode I showed you how to utilize an IP adapter and how to generate objects out of thin air. This time I'm going to teach you how to use LoRa's for inpainting and how to improve on the final details and how to upscale your image. Let's start. I want her to hold a glass of wine in her right hand. We need an in-painting mask, so in order to keep it clean, I'm going to delete every layer we have so far because we don't need it anymore. It gets too complicated if you have 20 layers and don't know which of them are still used and which of them are not. I'm going to in-paint her hand and all of her arm. And yeah, now we need to recreate our original succubus prompt. Lucky for us, we can go to the gallery, do a right click, say recall metadata and then click remix image. This will restore all the LoRa settings, the prompts and also the image settings. So yeah, we have to set our bounding box again. I add, she is holding a glass of wine to the positive prompt. Red wine actually. The tail sitting on throne can go away, we don't need it anymore. This was only for the base image. Let's increase the size of the in-painting mask so there is more room for experimentation for the image model. So let's set the denoising strength to 0.6 here. We need to fill our bounding box again, so this should be enough. Remember, you want to make it as small as possible, but you still want the image model to be able to recognize what's already in the image. She's holding the wine glass with both hands. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. So let's increase the denoising strength here and try again. This here is much better, though the fingers are really bad, but let's fix them right away. So we're making the mask smaller and we're also reducing our prompt. We just say woman holding a glass of red wine. So and this here can also go. Also let's remove the demon legion and the succubus Laura. Because we are just in painting a normal hand here. Let's decrease the denoising to 0.4. And also let's make this bounding box smaller. To not bore you I tried different denoising settings off screen. And I found that this one here, 0.7, yielded the best results. I zoom out to look at the overall image and I really like what I see so far. But the output of our succubus is pretty boring. So yeah, let's bring a little bit Legend of the Seeker into this outfit. I have this Laura already installed here. I don't know if we are going to do the full armor, but let's start with the boots maybe. So again, let's decrease our bounding box. And of course, what we need is another in-painting mask. I delete the old one here. Okay, next step is to mask her boots. And yeah, so that it looks like this. Actually, this side here is a little bit much. So we are going to erase some of the mask again. We reset the prompt to highly detailed photorealistic. And then we head over to Civitai to copy paste the trigger word from here. And I write over knee boots. Let's decrease the denoising here to 0.6. And actually, I want to have the boots in blue. This will bring a little bit of contrast into the image and also let's increase the weight here to one. Let's press invoke. I really like what we got so far. Um, this image here is maybe a little bit much, so we take this one here instead. You know what? We are going to take this for the upper body as well. So to make it easier, we are going to use this old select trick. I do right click and say select object. We only want her this time and it worked out pretty well. And again we say save as new in painting mask. And then we start erasing the mask where we already have it. We already have the boots and now we want the rest. We don't want to influence her head or her face so we remove the mask here as well. Let's decrease the Laura here, so this should be enough. And yeah, prompt wise, we are deleting almost everything and we just write leather armor. We are decreasing the denoising strength to 0.3 because we don't want that much of a change. 
we want just slight improvement. These images are our result and I really like them, I really do. This is our original image and yeah, I think it's a great addition to what we already have. I'm going to save it and then discard it because I've got another idea on how to improve it. I made the bounding box a little bit smaller and also I increased the denoising strength to 0.45. And yeah, maybe let's try red leather armor. Okay, it's great, but we have so much red already in our image, so maybe this wasn't the best idea I've ever had. You know what, I will try a little bit more off screen and then I will tell you what I did. See you soon. I created this one here, so what have I done so far? I added some prompts, armor, demon armor, thorns, big belt. I increased the legend of the seeker Laura to 0.6. And also I re-added the Demon Legion Laura we used for our initial succubus image. I set the denoising strength to 0.55. Yeah, great, I'm really satisfied with the armor. So there's one important thing we've done in our last video we need to bring back here. It's our skull. I'm activating it and we don't see the skull now. This is because of the layer order. The skull is basically below everything else, so we need to change it. And as expected, now we have a little blend problem here we need to fix. Like I said in my last video, you normally want to first improve on the background and then do the foreground. One way to improve on our situation would be the eraser tool, but I did a select object again. I had to do quite some points as you can see. Sometimes the segmentation model has trouble finding out what you want to extract. We click accept and yeah, you can see it fits better into the image, but we want to improve it further. We do this of course with another inpainting mask and we just paint over the skull. And up here we change our prompt to human skull. We set our denoising strength to 0.3, this should be enough. And of course we need to move around and resize our bounding box here. This should work well. We hit the invoke button. So we have these two images here. I'm going to take this because it fits more into our image. Some corners of our image will look more detailed than others, but we will fix this on our upscale step. So after the upscale you won't recognize any of this anymore. So I will go further over the image and do more inpainting. I will fast forward through this. Feel free to stick around. Because the techniques here I already showcased multiple times in earlier videos and in this here as well. I've got one trick up my sleeve that I want to show you here. I wanted to increase the details on both of our wings of our succubus character and I somehow couldn't get the same amount of details. So either there were too many veins or not enough veins. So I needed to go another way about this. Here you can see what it looked like before and what my result was. I saved this raster layer out and then I delete this to inpainting masks here. I do a right click and say copy inpainting mask to new regional guidance. And now I click here on reference image. I go over to my gallery and drag the image from up here over to the layers and let go in here. I'm setting the denoising strength to 0.4 and yeah, I hope for the best.
this year is way too detailed. Also, it turned this year into a beak of uh, birch or something. And yeah, that's not what we want. So we are reducing the denoising strength to 0.3 and the regional guidance to 0.5. After some off-screen experimentation, this is my final result. I increased the weight of the regional guidance again to 0.75 and decreased the denoising strength to 0.25. So one minor issue to fix here are these buildings here that are slightly a couple of pixels into the image. So we are doing it the lazy way, we are just cutting it off. We are making our bounding box smaller and then we just do a right click, save to gallery, save bounding box to gallery. And now it's finally time to upscale. So what we have to do here is do a right click on our gallery image and we say upscale. And now this window opens. First of all, you should see an upscale model in this drop down menu. If you can't select anything, then you need to install it via the models tab. So just a quick tip, if you're coming from Automatic 11.11 or Forge UI, your upscale models should be in the models ESR GAN folder of your web UI. But I will also include a link in my video description for you to download the 4X Ultra Sharp from Civitai. The way Invoke upscales is they use the Forex Ultra Sharp or any other upscaler, but they also use the image model. So this is why it's important to provide a most accurate prompt and also maybe include one of the LoRa's uh, you use to create these images. So in our case for prompt, we are adding destroyed city in background and also our Hellhound, of course. So regarding our LoRa's, the add detail slider can stay at 0.5. Yeah, Demon Legion, let's put it to 0.5 and Succubus 0.2 because it's not the only thing in the image, you know. Scheduler is okay. CFG scale, however, too seems a little bit low. So let's crank it up. Okay, creativity and structure. So creativity, think of it as the denoising strength. So if you set it to 10, the output image won't look much like the input image. So I usually go with something like four, five or three. I haven't a real rule for it. So and structure is also to keep your original composition intact. So this is also between four and six. Now let's render it and compare results afterwards. So upscaling with Invoke takes quite some time, but the result is worth it. I always set it to two times, not four times, because um, you want to iterate on the upscale. So if you're satisfied with the upscale, then you can do it again if you want. These are our upscale results. So I experimented with different settings. This here has a creativity of eight and you can see the back of the throne is gone. And now our hellhound looks like it's cut in half. So that's not what we wanted actually. So basically these values are for you to try out. Sometimes you have images where a little bit creativity is good because creativity usually means more details. But on the other hand, uh, the consistency of the image is also important. After the upscale, I'm still not satisfied with the face of our succubus, so let's improve on it for one last time. So you know the drill. I started a new canvas session here and dragged the image in. And now, like always, I drag a bounding box here and I paint over the face. And of course we need a prompt. So let's go with female succubus, highly detailed, smirk, looking at viewer, staring, dark eyeshadow, red glowing eyes. You know what, let's try it without any Loras. The denoising is set to 0.5 and yeah, let's go. Okay, this set looks out of proportion, so let's decrease the denoising to 0 
To improve image quality further, let's add our negative prompt we set up in the first episode of the series. And yeah, why not also add the positive prompt? Two images this time and yeah, invoke. These look so much better. I'm going to take this one here. We could now go on and improve on the fingers here because they got worse with the upscale, but actually let's call it a day. I like it as it is. This concludes my multi-part tutorial series. So I hope you learned a lot. And if you want to support this channel, then like and subscribe because there's still so much I can teach you about Invoke AI and other AI tools and techniques like in this video.